So tonight we're talking about love and we're starting in Isaiah 53 verse 11 to 12. And it says this, the prophecy 700 years before Christ came, before the fulfillment of this, God spoke through a prophet, through a man, through a broken man, but used him mightily to reveal something that was going to happen ahead before them in the future. And it says this, After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death. Everyone say, poured out. (laughs) And was numbered with transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is speaking of Jesus Christ. Not just Jesus, the man, not just Christ, but Jesus Christ. A God who's fully man, but fully divine. God became flesh and dwelt among us. Isaiah 11 verse 14 says, Emmanuel, God with us. And what Paul is showing us in Romans and what we've been unpackaging and what this scripture is prophesying and which we now celebrate here tonight on Wednesday night is the fact that Jesus became flesh. God Himself, Jesus Christ became flesh. Colossians 2 verse 19 says this, If I can find it, it says, For in him dwells all the fullness, everyone say fullness, of the Godhead bodily. Or another version says, For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. So if we break this down, the passage actually says, In in Jesus dwelt bodily the full measure of the state of being God. The full measure of God. So what I'm trying to do is unpackage who Jesus Christ is for you because I think we need to get a deeper and greater revelation. Chris Bartlett's here from Melbourne. (laughs) Hey, Chris Bartlett. We need to get a greater revelation. He's just looking like Jesus, so he's just distracting me with his beard. (laughs) The fullness of God dwelt in Jesus Christ. He was God. And you'll notice throughout history, the thing that is attacked is the deity and the humanity of Christ and the combination of the two. And the reason that is attacked is because if you don't have both, then we're all sunk in a sinking ship without a hope, without a lifesaver, without any hope of escaping death. But the fact that Jesus Christ is God and is fully human and felt the temptation and the trials and the suffering and the stress and the pressure that you feel, yet overcame that through the power of the Holy Spirit and hung on a cross and shed His blood, the fullness of God was poured out. It wasn't just a good guy saying, I really want to help these people. It was God on that cross. It was God on that cross for your sin tonight, for your brokenness, for your hurt, for your pain, for the damage you have caused because you were enemies with God. You were enemies, but Jesus Christ came to bring peace and reconciliation and He did it on the cross at Calvary. And so, Isaiah says he will, but we look to Romans and we read in verse 5, leading out of last week, it says, And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. Notice the language here. It is past tense. Isaiah is saying He will. 
a promise of God. In Romans chapter 4, Abraham's faith was for something that God was going to do. But now our faith is based on what Christ has already done. So our faith is greater than Abraham's because God has already delivered what He promised beforehand. Come on, Jesus. See, most believers approach it with the faith of Abraham, waiting for God to do something. But we're on the other side. We are righteous and made right because of what Jesus has already done. I'm looking back at the cross with full assurance and full hope, with a hope that does not disappoint. Why? Why does it not disappoint? Because it's already happened. It's already happened. You don't kind of open your birthday presents, get what you want, and then say, I was, you know, I'm really hoping I get my, you know, what's cool right now? I don't know what's cool. Tamagotchis. Tamagotchis. <laughs> I love those things. You can you got to clean up their poo and digital poo. And uh, is, that, is that that little Japanese egg thing? Yeah, I'm with it. You don't open it up and go, I hope I get a Tamaguchi. It's right in front of you. The scriptures have revealed a divine Tamaguchi. (laughs) If the forefathers of faith can have faith for God to do something when they have no idea of how it's going to work out, how much more should we have the faith that comes from the faithfulness that Christ has already done it on the cross? Not only did He die, but we have to have a revelation tonight that He is resurrected and He is alive. And the fact that He's alive enables His love to be poured out into your heart through His Holy Spirit. The promise has been there. It's in black and white. It's revealed to us through the Spirit of God. Our heart now witnesses to that truth. The Holy Spirit gives us the sign that what did happen 2,000 years ago did really happen. That peace witnesses to the justification that we are no longer condemned but set free from our sins. All these things, God is in His amazing grace giving us this joy, this peace, this love, this hope. Why? Because He really wants us to walk this life with Him, giving Him glory every single day so that others can experience what you've experienced.